Welcome to this GCSE lesson on nuclear physics. So let's start off by looking at this diagram. What does this diagram represent? And describe what is shown in the diagram. Pause the video now to consider this and then I will give you the answers. So this diagram represents a lithium atom. What's shown in the diagram are the protons and neutrons in the nucleus and the electrons orbiting that nucleus. Now, we can tell that the protons are red and the neutrons are blue because there should be in an atom the same number of protons as electrons. And since there are three red and three gray, where the gray are the electrons, that means the red must therefore be the protons. Meanwhile, the blue is the leftovers, so it must represent the neutrons. So first of all, before we go into the depth of this, state what is meant by a particle. State what happens when opposite charges and like charges are placed near each other. State the location of electrons and the nucleus of an atom. And describe how the periodic table is arranged. Pause the video now to attempt these, and then I will give you the answers. So a particle is just a small piece of matter. Generally, we draw particles as spheres, so balls, but they're not always that shape. Sometimes you might have a molecule where it's multiple atoms joined together, and that is still considered a particle. State what happens when opposite charges and like charges are placed near each other. Well, when you place opposite charges near one another, they are attracted to each other. And when you place like charges next to one another, they repel each other. Now the location of electrons is orbiting around the outside of the nucleus and the location of the nucleus is the center of the atom. And finally, the arrangement of the periodic table. The periodic table is placed in order of atomic number, that is the number of protons inside the atom. It is also placed in columns of similar property elements. So elements with similar properties are placed in columns. Now, in fact, this is due to the number of electrons in the outer shell, but that's a lesson for chemistry and not physics. So I'd like to start off by sketching a simple version of figure A, as you can see at the top right there. Name the three parts which make up the atom and fill in the blanks here. The something and something are found in the nucleus, but the something are found orbiting the nucleus. Pause the video before I move on. Next, I'd like to sketch a copy of this. This is an element tile. This is what you will see on the periodic table with the element symbol X, the atomic mass A, and the atomic number Z. In the next slide, you'll see an example of this. Here we have the example element tiles for lithium and beryllium. Lithium, you can see, has seven things in the nucleus, and so its atomic mass is seven. And it has three protons, and so its atomic number is three. Meanwhile, beryllium is beryllium because it has four protons in the center. And its atomic mass is going to be nine because there are nine objects in the center. This is five neutrons and four protons. So what makes an element? Physicists know that the atom is made of several smaller pieces called protons, neutrons, and electrons. 
and it is the electrons that are responsible for all chemical reactions. So these electrons orbit a central area called the nucleus, named after the nucleus of the cell which had been discovered 200 years earlier. It turns out that the number of electrons in an atom is equal to the number of protons. Since protons cannot be easily added or taken away, it is these protons which determine the type of element, while the mass of an element is determined by the number of particles inside the nucleus. So above we have figure D, which shows two element tiles along with the graphical representation of those elements. The atomic mass is the number of nucleons, that is, particles inside the nucleus. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. Neither number on its own tells us the number of neutrons. To calculate that, we need to take the total number of nucleons, that's the atomic mass, and subtract the number of protons, which is the atomic number. So now I'd like you to complete these sentences. Atomic mass is a result of the number of The atomic number is the same as the number of, and finally, the number of neutrons can be calculated by doing what? Finally, the reason we don't consider the electrons as part of the atomic mass is because they have a relative mass compared to the mass of a proton that is extremely small. Its relative mass is tiny compared to a proton. So, compared to a proton, a proton has a mass of one and it has a charge of one. Compared to a proton, a neutron has a mass of one, which means it has the same mass as a proton, but it has a charge of zero. It does not carry electric charge. And finally, the electron has a mass of one two thousandth of a proton. And its charge is negative one compared to a proton. Sketch a copy of this figure. Finally, if you want to complete this activity yourself, by pausing the screen and completing all that you can see, please do so. There are a number of notes, questions, problem solving, and a revision activity for you to do.